A police in Spain refloated a homemade so-called narco sub yesterday. They suspect that it may have been used to transport cocaine. And just last week, Colombia's Navy uncovered two dead bodies, two survivors, and tons of illegal drugs aboard another sub in the Pacific Ocean. Navy officials say the vessel carried nearly 6,000 pounds of cocaine, worth more than $87 million. So I want to bring in Derek Maltz he, to talk a little bit more about this. He's the former director of the Drug Enforcement Administration Special Operations Division. This sounds like something out of a movie. Um, but we have actually known that drug traffickers have been using submarines for years now. Um, you were actually sort of involved in an exercise uh, to take a look at what some of these submarines look like years ago. I can only imagine what the technology is like now. So how are these cartels able to build these submarines? How are they able to find people who have the know-how to man them? And what do they use them for? So good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, back in like the 1980s, uh, the uh, Colombian drug traffickers, they work closely with Russian sub manufacturers. OK, when I was the head of the DEA Special Operations Division, uh, I watched this grow for many years. But my first tour of duty at the Special Operations Division, we had an operation called Red October. And that's because we were focusing on the Russian submarine manufacturers working with the Colombian cartels. But they're very sophisticated. They built them to protect their global enterprise. They want to reduce loss and grow revenue. And so they want to evade apprehension. They want to be able to move the drugs around the world without getting caught. After in the 80s, they were using the go fast operations, but the go fast were being detected on the radar. So they basically built these very sophisticated submarines so they could, you know, avoid getting caught by police. It's that simple. And so, you know, we talked about authorities in Spain picking up one of these submarines. I mean, are these things capable of going from like South America or Central America all the way to Spain? Like these kind well, of distances? What, what I've been told when I was working at the Special Operations Division, they were primarily used in the Caribbean and going into Central America, you know, like Panama right. and right into Mexico. But I've been told that they've advanced so much that I know like a couple of years ago, there was a, there was one semi-submersible that they seized that they said came from Colombia. So yeah, the sophistication is off the charts. They have billions of dollars. So resources are not an issue. But the most important thing that everyone has to realize is they're in the business to make money, like a Fortune 500 company. Mm. They want to maximize their revenue. So if they lose a couple of tons of cocaine, that's a big loss to the organization. Listen, you've spoken to Congress, you've spoken to government leaders. You're talking about a financial investment by these cartels that is massive. Do we, do, 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 do American authorities have the resources, and clearly it's not just American authorities, to combat something like this? Well, that's a great question. I mean, there are many out there that are now asking for the military to be involved. I know, you know, obviously for these semi-submersibles to be captured, we need the U.S. military, we need the Coast Guard, the Navy to use their, you know, their equipment. But the thing is, is that these cartels have evolved from drug cartels to transnational criminals to now narco terrorists. I mean, we've been fighting like the FARC in Colombia, the AUC in Colombia, as they evolved as this unbelievable narco terrorist organization. But what's really sad is that we also see the uh, interaction between global terrorists like Hezbollah working with the cartels. I mean, we did an operation, Project Cassandra, a very well-known operation where the Hezbollah militants set up a trade-based money laundering scheme. They were involved with $200 million a month laundering money back to Hezbollah. And they were moving multi-tons of cocaine. So it's not just a, you know, it's not just the Mexican cartels and the Colombian cartels. Mm -hmm. It's criminal networks around the world. And now we have China working with the Mexican cartels. And that's a big national security threat for America. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like we're just scratching the surface uh, with this conversation, Derek. Uh, but it's good talking to you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Have a great day. You too.